Hey guys, what's going on? So in the video today, I'm very excited because in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing my friend Mario's iron boots. Uh, my buddy Mario from Canada, he sent me these boots to review. So these are the monkey boots and or roofer boots, but iron boots refers to these as monkey boots in black Italian waxed bull hide. This is an incredible leather. So the reason why the nomenclature or the term monkey boot became popular to refer to these types of boots is because originally these are my thorough goods in desert sand. These are also roofer slash monkey boots. Thorough good also calls these portage boots. Uh, portage is the thorough good specific name for this design, but in all actuality, this is a roofer boot. This boot model was designed for roofers. And the reason that it took on the side term or the nickname monkey boot is because I believe this originated in Japan. They would see guys wearing these roofer boots and climbing up ladders. And because they were climbing on ladders, climbing up onto roofs and stuff, they just gave them the anecdotal term monkey boot because they look like monkeys climbing. So I'll be comparing my thorough good roofers to these iron boots. So iron boots is a new brand that I was not aware of until fairly recently, until Mario started talking to me about them. So iron boots are made in China. And what I'm noticing is there's a lot of these brands popping up in China and in Indonesia. And what it seems to be is they're very small makers. And sometimes they're even related to each other. They know each other. They're just, in a lot of cases, just one single guy behind the brand. Kind of like how I'm doing with my bags right now. It's like, I just have a small workshop. I make products, customize. We're trying to turn it into a brand, trying to turn it into something big and large and successful. But as you're starting out, you're slowly getting discovered by the community. It's really just a fascinating thing to watch bloom and blossom. It's really like an organic, I like to see this. I like to see like one guy handling his own brand, handling his own marketing, building his own stuff. I love it. I don't know much about the owner, but he's been fairly engaged with my posts because I've posted a few of these pictures of these so far. He's a super nice guy. He's super proud of his work. I could tell just by looking at his Instagram account, just by looking at uh, everything that he's been doing so far. Let's talk about this boot right here. So like I said, this is black Italian wax bull hide. I don't think I own any bull hide boots. This is a first for me. And then this waxed look that it has. So the leather itself is black and you can see that burnished on the toe there. But the rest of the boot has like a waxy finish, a white waxy finish on it. And you can really see the bull hide texture, especially on the quarters here. So what's really cool about it is it kind of reminds me of Ghost Shell Cordovan, which is also a newer concept where they just basically, they take the leather, it's a smooth finished leather, and they just wax the crap out of it. And it creates this very cool ghost ghosting effect on the surface. And it'll reveal itself depending on how much patina is on it, how much it's been worn, uh, how much it's been buffed. Its appearance will vary quite a bit. It's similar to wax flesh in a lot of ways. Wax flesh, that outer wax on the rough out starts to wear down, it starts to reveal the layers and the nap beneath, it starts to rough up the nap, the nap becomes hairy, and then you could re-wax that, refinish that down, and start over again if you wanted to. And so this is a similar thing. I think that's really cool. So let's talk about this model in particular. So we've got black waxed bull hide. Yeah, so we've got six standard eyelets, three speed hooks. The All the hardware on this is super duper hardy. They're using a very good quality, very thick brass on the speed hooks here. I can't pinch that down even if I wanted to, unlike the stuff that Alden uses, it, it, it can pinch down very easily. It's very thin. Yeah, some brands just use uh, eyelets that for some reason can pinch down easily. I, I, I assume they can also be replaced fairly, fairly easily. Whereas Iron Boots uses real hardy, real thick stuff. It doesn't crease. Similar to like what Truman, yeah. Viberg would use the really thick stuff on their larger eyelets, but on their smaller stuff, they use thinner stuff that does crease. We've got a straight line 
that extends all along the quarter here. We've got, so yeah, the back heel stay stitching appears cosmetic, but actually it's stitching in place a heel cup on the inside for support. Rawhide laces, love that. We've got a roll top edge here at the shaft. Looks very sharp. Compare that to the Thoroughgoods. The Thoroughgood did not do a roll top at the top there. It's just a raw, unfinished edge. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just a stylistic difference. They do charge a little bit more. This is a lot more work to do this at the roll top at the shaft. The sole seems to be a Iron Boots specific sole. So that's going to be a rubber micro stud sole. Very cool pattern on the bottom there. So it's got two what appears to be rope prints on there, and then five studs beneath the vamp, three studs at the base. It says iron boots with raised relief there, very nice. And then with indented relief at the bottom, it says iron boots as well down there. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nails in the heel. We've got a yeah, veg tan leather midsole and insole. And this is gonna be a 260 degree Goodyear welt, hand stitched, very tight SPI there. The tongue is waxed Italian bull hide as well. Rough out on the inside, which gives it a good amount of grip when it's on your foot. Unlined, all in all, a fantastic looking roofer boot. So let me talk about sizing for a second. So when I got these, I'm like, I'm looking at the size 9E. I'm like, those look like those would be a good fit for me. And I put them on and I'm like, whoa, that's the perfect fit. That is a really, really good fit. So for sizing, I would actually say for this exact last, which I believe they call this the T last. Yeah, let me read a little bit. So according to Iron Boots, so we've got black Italian wax bull hide, it's hand welt construction. They used wool as a filler instead of cork. They used a leather shank instead of steel. They used leather stiffener for both the toe and the heel. Veg tan leather welt, leather insole and midsole from France. Customized Dr. Soul Rockhord rubber outsole. Interesting. So that's the Iron Boots customized Dr. Soul Rockhord rubber outsole. Yeah, they feel like Dr. Soul. And then six brass eyelets, three brass speed hooks. Proudly made in China by one man. So yeah, this is the T Sports Last, they call it. Now I will say, I think this last is probably gonna be mostly true to size because I'm a 9D Brannock with a high volume foot, fairly, you know, muscular, lots of flesh in my foot. <laughs> 9E in this feels like the perfect fit, in fact, these thorough goods in size eight and a half D are a lot more generous fitting than the iron boots in nine E. The iron boots even at nine E look smaller in terms of length than the thorough goods in eight and a half D. Now, like I said, the thorough goods are a little generous on me. Now the thing with playing around with widths on roofer boots, one thing to keep in mind is that you can adjust the width yourself when you lace them up. That's one thing that's unique to roofers, the lace, any lace to toe boot, is that you can actually, every time you lace it up, the side panels open up and close, right? Most boots don't have that function, but roofer boots were sort of designed that way. And so the width is gonna be something that you can play with a lot with a roofer boot. I'm gonna go ahead and say that these are definitely true to size and maybe even smaller than true to size. Like I want to say that the equivalent of this iron boots might be a full size off from the Thoroughgood roofer model. I'd probably even be good with like a nine and a half D, which is a size I'd be very hesitant to ever buy. But overall this nine E, if I were to order a pair, I'd order a pair in that size. That's definitely my size. I love that fit. I, in these thorough good roofers, I could have gone down to an 8D. It would have been fine because, yeah, this is basically Alden Berry equivalent, maybe a little wider. 
and especially again with the with the variable width that you can really play with there. So yeah, these are my roofers, my Thorogood roofers in brown chrome XL. So the comparison is, again, the shaft on the iron boots is gonna be a little taller. So design-wise, there is gonna be like quite a few differences. So if you see on the desert sand on the Thorogoods, the shaft is gonna be shorter on the Thorogoods, but also what's unique to these Thorogoods is they're overbuilt. And so you've got the standard panel on the quarter here. You've got another, an additional panel, triple stitched on top and triple riveted down, right? The, the thinking behind that is that you can wear through this panel, you get another panel, because if your foot's on the roof scraping around, you are gonna wear through. You know, if you're resting your foot on the roof and scraping it across the surface, that rough surface, that's basically sanding away at your boot all day long. So if you're really using these as a roofer boot, you want that extra panel for added protection, reinforcement. On the iron boots, it doesn't have that additional panel. It's just the, the one panel all along that comprises the entire quarter. We've got a back heel strip, another panel that comprises this quarter, and then the toe, and then the tongue is separate. So the Thoroughgoods will have an additional panel here. Yeah, they also got the back heel strip here. I did a full re video review on these. These Thoroughgoods are just, they're workhorses. They're just overbuilt. They've got, they're double stitched, 360 degree Goodyear welt with a storm welt, cork sole, just an overbuilt roofer boot, actually made for real roofing. You know what I mean? Same, same with these. You can see on the brown chrome XL, the additional panel stitched on top of this one. So, and Thoroughgood does a really good job. I think a better job than Red Wing, in my opinion, with their finishing. Like I've said this before, Red Wing just feels kind of slopped together. Thoroughgood does a really good job. Anyways, so yeah, so I would definitely call these monkey boots true to size. You might even want to play around, go up a width. I confirmed with Mario that they are 9E, and so I was I was kind of surprised by just how small they were, because a 9E typically in a US boot brand would be too big. These are just the right size. Definitely going true to size with these is definitely what I would recommend. Do not size down. That would not be my recommendation, unless, you know, even, even if you have a low volume foot, I would still go up to half size because the length is still, all right, so the Chrome XL looks to be the same length in the Thorough Goods and in the Iron Boots. So again, Iron Boots 9E, Thorough Good 8.5D. And looking at the stitch pattern, the width looks the same between these two. The reason why the Chrome XL probably appears visually a little smaller compared to the Desert Sand is because the the Chrome XL will, after it's after you remove the last, the Chrome XL shrinks down just by a little bit. Whereas this desert sand, I, I want to say that this is more of a Coyote rough out type leather, which doesn't stretch. Basically, the shape that it is when it comes off the last is the shape that it's going to retain forever. Whereas Chrome XL has a variable uh, stretch. It's going to stretch. It's going to contort with your foot. But another thing to keep in mind with that. And this is why I hate stretch to this concept of stretch to fit. Is yeah, is stretch to fit a, a real thing? Yes, and you can do that, but you got to do it with a plain toe. So, for example, this Grant Stone Diesel in natural chrome XL, that'll stretch because it'll stretch to fit to a certain degree. Why? Because it's a plain toe. It's unimpeded by all that by a bunch of stitching. Compare that to the Grant Stone Ottawa. Same last, same leather, just black black chrome XL, so this is going to be a mock toe. You think that's ever going to stretch? How's this, how's this boot ever going to stretch to fit if you've got all this reinforcement stitching all along the mock? So in other words, what I'm getting at is this cotton stitching isn't going to stretch. That's going to hold its shape forever unless you break the stitching somehow. The areas of leather can and do stretch, but the, but the, uh, the stitching here is going to hold that in place. This is something you got to keep in mind. Can you rely on the stretch to fit model? I wouldn't, but if you did want to go the stretch to fit route, you're better off going with the plain toe model. Stretch to fit on a roofer like this where there's so much going on, lace to toe, all this stitching, 
this additional panel. Don't expect this to stretch to fit is what I'm getting at. And something like this, where the leather doesn't stretch, don't expect that to stretch to fit. Shell Cordovan, don't expect that to stretch to fit. Kudu's a really good example. So these Mark Alberts, I got these in eight and a half double E. I should have I should have done the D, why? Because they stretch so much. I mean, I could even pull it here. You could sort of see how much it's gonna stretch. The tongue stretches a whole bunch. So I should have I should have gone with the D width in this because it's just generous, especially with all that extra give from the kudu. The kudu is not a super duper firm leather. It's very soft, almost as soft as a suede. It stretches just a ton. Compare that to Rambler. This Rambler, little stretch, not very much. It's a very high temper leather, Rambler. So I wouldn't expect Rambler to stretch to fit. And again with the cap toe. That cap toe is not gonna allow much stretch. You'll get stretch in the in the base of the vamp here if, if you really wear them a lot, wear them hard on say like a pair of Chrome XL, but you're not gonna get this stitched area, this stitched portion, it, that's not gonna stretch because of the stitching. Let me talk about Iron Boots just a little bit more. So their Instagram handle is Iron Boots USA and they do a lot of incredible work I'm just scrolling through their Instagram. All right, so going back, looking at their Instagram, looks like they've been at it for a while, since 2020, shot by shot, phone camera, no filter, policeman from Iron Boots coming to the USA. They've just done some really crazy, really nice models over the years. Green horse hide. Wow. Incredible custom work there. Tuscany waxed bull hide. They really like their wax bull hide from Italy. Iron Boots Devil Dog in Burgundy Italian horse hide. Ooh, what's this? Looks like something similar to the bull hide. Okay, oh cool, here we go. Aged iron boots. This looks like more of the uh, Italian black wax bull hide. Yeah, same leather, same hardware. Whoa, so nice. Norwegian split toe there. Thugs in suits, wow, that's a super cool last. Super chunky. Looks like a chocolate suede there. Very sweet. Yeah, that's a crazy last. Chrome XL. So that's going to be Burgundy Chrome XL 5515. Looks like Horween for sure. Perforated cap toe. Very cool. Oh, these are really sweet. Choco suede. Dark brown Italian rough out leather. Whoa. Yeah, those are super good. Wow. Coffee brown Tuscany waxed. Bull hide, super cool. Italian black rough out. Coffee brown Italian bull hide. Yeah, he really does these Tus these Tuscany Italian bull hides a lot. Ooh, these caught my eye. Navy blue Italian rough out. Wow, incredible. Cool, Bennett Stitchdown did a iron boots, everything you need to know from leathers to sizing to ordering. That's right, I think I remember that article that he wrote on those. I think I read that. Hand dyed navy blue Italian horse hide from Mariam. With our own branded rubber sole. Yeah, so that's the same branded rubber sole that's on the, these ones that I'm talking about right now. Oh, those are sharp. Rough out from Tannery Schiarada. Industria Concharia. Concharia means tannery in Italian. I know that much. Quite the line up there. Ooh, these are nice. Rosewood brown scotch grain anane calf. Dark green hand dyed horse hide. Super sharp. More of this Italian wax bull hide. Custom shoe trees. Monkey boots, burgundy, very cool. 
It's a secret tannery in Italy, huh? Tea monkey boots, Italian wax bull hide. I wonder if these are the same ones I'm reviewing now. It's hard to tell. It looks like he's built these a few times, so I don't know exactly which pair I have. I could try to zero in on that, but... Wow. Lace to toe, burgundy. So sharp. Hand dyed and hand worn green Weinheimer calfskin. Absolutely insane. Remind these remind me of my color eighty five horse rump Truman boots. A wax bull hide, new wax bull hide. Wow, how that'll age over time. Phew. They look nothing like the ones that I have here. Here's more of that calf skin. Hand worn, hand patinated, hand dyed. That's crazy. Hand dyed green iron boots, Pittman. Sean McCarthy, very sweet. Oh, here we go. Welted wear. Pittman's. Super cool. Ooh, whoa, what's this? Navy blue rough out. <laughs> Amazing. Ooh, these are cool. Natural Italian horse hide, best, best leather to age with, in my opinion. There is one thing to pay attention, though. Because we do hand lasting, there is a chance to have some some light hammer mark on the top of the vamp. The light color would make that more obvious than other leathers. Please be aware of the risk before pulling the trigger. Okay, so these ones, I think, are the ones that I have here. These ones, the ones that I am reviewing specifically, and I could confirm that if I just look at the, oh yeah, yep. So I can tell because for f probably a few reasons, but right here and right here, just like your thumbprint is gonna be super unique, this boot is gonna have very unique um, pebble grain unique to it. Pebble green patterns, and these are the ones that I'm reviewing now. Yep, confirmed. Wow, these are nice. Rosewood, brown, and an calf in scotch grain construction. Insane, wow. Iron boots, toe taps, those are awesome. Here we have a two-tone monkey boot. Looks like black and the coffee waxed bull hide. Yeah, so as you guys can see, Iron Boots USA is doing some amazing things. Ben with Stitch Down has done a collab with them, wrote an article about them, about their sizing and everything. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below so you can check that out. Uh, so you can compare his sizing advice with mine. I definitely think they're more true to size than a half size large that's for dang sure and uh, yeah definitely give them a look and I'm definitely after looking at their stuff I'm definitely tempted now to especially after feeling a little bit more confident about knowing my size now super duper good work that this guy's doing so it looks like he does different models too so he's got the devil dog which looks like a more dressy cap toe with perforated cap toes so a little bit more dressy more of an almond shape last He's got the 5515. I'm not sure what the. Okay, the 5515 is going to be the more chunky, bulbous boot that you can see here in burgundy. See, a lot more chunk to the uh, toe box there. Where's the Devil Dog? Yeah, that's more of a. That's going to be more of like the Viberg 2030 traditional almond shaped toe there. And then we've got the. Natural HH horse hide. 
Okay, so we've got the FLT, which appears to be their Norwegian split toe and or tanker boot model. Looks like it's got a real tapered out waist here. Super tapered out waist, but super sharp. Wow. Looks like it, it, this is one of their popular models. Their FLT. So yeah, think of their FLT as their tanker. We've also got the T Monkey which is what I'm reviewing here which is going to be a lace to toe with a roll top shaft and then here's the Pitman also looks like a chunkier type of a perforated cap toe let's compare the Pitman to the 5515 here the 5515 looks like even yet a chunkier last than the compared to the Pitman. Yeah, the Pitman looks a little bit more standard, maybe more like a Red Wing or maybe more like the Truman 20 last. Yeah, not as chunky as the 5515 and then oh, they got loafers. Very low pr toe profile loafers there, very sharp. Looks like a similar last that they used, maybe possibly the same last that they use on the FLT. Yeah, the FLT Looks like the same last that they use on their loafer, but I'm not exactly sure. And yeah, they specialize in that, in that waxed bull hide. I think that'll do it for now. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Leave me your thoughts about these boots in the comments below. What do you think about them? Have you ever ordered a pair of iron boots? If not, are you considering ordering a pair? And uh, please share your experiences in the, in the comments below. I am very impressed by the level of workmanship here and the level of design and the leathers that they source and all that. So go give them a follow on Instagram. I'll also use, I'll also put the link to that in the description below. And anyways, you can follow me on Instagram. My username is aerosurferlv and Anyways, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I will see y'all in my next video.